Hey folks, this is a quick tutorial about depth of field in Cinema 4D. Uh, depth of field has to do with the focal range of objects in your scene. And in this case, you can see that uh, we have a shallow focal range. And so we have an object in the front that's clear and in focus. And as we move back into space, they're slowly getting blurry. Um, oftentimes you see this in um, product photography um, where, you know, emphasis is given to an object in focus and those moving back into space get de-emphasized or get blurry. Um, so the way to do this is to create a scene that has some depth. So I'm just going to use a sphere. I'm going to clone the sphere using a MoGraph cloner. I'm going to put the sphere inside of the cloner as a child. And when I click on the cloner, um, currently it's moving um, 19 inches along the y-axis. Um, I'm going to move it along the z-axis, like 150, and I'm going to make a few more clones here. Oops, 50, and uh, I'm going to make a few more clones so that goes farther back into space. I'm going to orient my scene so that I can see this moving. I'm going to put a floor in just for the fun of it, something like that, uh, and then uh, I'm going to put a camera in. So. Um, Make sure when you drop a camera in, you're looking through the camera, so grab this little tab right here and turn that on. And then in order to use um, depth of field, we have to consider what renderer we're using. So um, if we go to the standard renderer, we have to go to effect and depth of field and make sure that that's checked on. Uh, the default is going to be about 5%, uh, which is fine for now, so we'll close that up. And then in the camera, um, we need to go to details and choose um, either the front blur, so objects in front of the camera, um, the rear blur, so beyond our point of focus. Uh, in this case, I want the rear blur. You could have them both on as well if you like. And then um, I'm going to go to, oh, so just to, just to sort of view what this is, if we go to the top view here, you can see we turn off the rear view, you can see this. So this is our camera, the field of view, our objects in, in the plane of view. Uh, this is the focal range, which you can change manually. And um, when you bring in the, the rear blur, we have this uh, other green, sort of darker green triangular area that is beyond the range of focus here. And this shows um, what, area, what objects are going to be um, starting to get blurry as they go back into space. If you were to include front blur, you get this icon right here, which you can move. And so the object, like this object, would start to be blurry as it goes back into space. So you can control that manually. The other thing you can do if you're in the camera is you can choose an object which is going to be a focus object. And um, since I have a cloner, I need to make this editable quickly here so that all of these objects become individuals. And I'm going to use sphere zero, the front one, as the um, object that I want to have in focus. So um, what you can do is you can grab the object and drag it down to where it says focus object in the attributes manager of the camera. Under object, focus object, you point to that sphere. You can usually drag it down or you can grab this little arrow and then point to which one you want to bring in there. But notice what happens when you do that. Um, the focal range has changed uh, to be in the plane of that object, which is sphere zero. And so if we view this now, if we render it out, <clears throat> we will see that objects going back into space beyond this object here are starting to get blurry. And uh, it's quite a bit of blur, actually 5% is quite a bit. So I'm just going to reduce this down, let's say 2%, so it's a little bit smoother transition. And there we go. We see these objects slowly moving back into space, getting blurry, and the horizon is quite blurry beyond that. All right, so if we wanted to use the physical renderer instead of the standard renderer, there's a different way to do it. So sometimes um, you want to use the physical renderer to optimize uh, global illumination or physical sky, some of those other things. So in this case, um, we need to go to change it to physical renderer and then go to physical and turn on depth of field. Okay, close this out. Now, this is going to be a little bit different in that um, we can still 
utilize um, this focal range. So we'll go back and forth here. Um, we don't need to turn this, have this on anymore. We don't need to really see that map. But um, under physical in the camera, um, what we need to do is to start thinking about what our f-stop is. So this is going to be acting like a physical camera. Uh, and so we need to consider how that works in terms of photography. So in photography, um, the wider the aperture, which is actually the smaller the f-stop, uh, the shallower depth of field you're going to achieve. So in our attributes here, we can, you know, so 22 is a very tiny opening, a very tiny opening in the lens, a very tiny aperture, and a very large number on the f-stop, but that means it's going to be a wide range of focal, focal range. F1 <coughs> is going to be a shallower range of focus. Now, it depends upon the sort of distance of your object away from, um, from your settings, but let's just try this. We'll start with, with F1 and see uh, what that does for us. Mm, not really much. The horizon is slightly blurry, but not really too much. So we can actually go beyond that. We don't have to choose one of those defaults. We can start going down. So if we were to go down, let's say, to I don't know, 0.2, we should see um, a difference. And here you go. You can see as the objects are going back, they're getting quite blurry. Uh, and the horizon is even blurry yet there. So you know, you can, whatever degree of blurriness you want has to do with actually what f-stop you're using. So if we go to 0.4, you can see that it's a little blur, you know, a little less blurry or transition, maybe something like 0.6. Um, 0.6 would be, a, you know, a little bit smoother. So I would say something like 0.5 is pretty good for this setting, where it gets a little bit blurry back in space, the horizon is definitely blurry, and you get that transition of movement along the way. I think actually maybe 0.3 or 0.4 is going to be similar to what we were using before. But here we get that uh, that transition as we're going back into space. So that's pretty much how this scene was set up, uh, where we have physical renderer. Uh, the camera is at uh, 0.5. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in our render, you can see that um, we're slowly uh, getting a bit of blur even in this second object to get a tiny bit the third object is definitely starting to get out and as we move back into the horizon line we get a nice uh, range of that of that blurry um, sort of sense of depth of field all right so that's it thanks